I don't like anything that's like too pre rehearsed. Like it makes me uncomfortable for which okay. is so weird. Like, oh, he's got a bunch of <laughs> platinum records and he's from the Midwest and he's tall. I don't know, you know, just like you know, the kind of You're like, very tall. Thank you. You're the only guy I've ever met that that hasn't lied about his height. He doesn't have to. I wasn't shocked yeah. by your tallness this time because I read about it. I'm I'm tall, but you know. I just always assume six foot means like five eleven, five ten. You know, six foot four is six one. I actually did the opposite for a long time where it was just like I had this weird enjoyment out of like saying I was like six six and then people meeting me and I was like actually taller than that. So like I have lyrics where I said I'm six six and I have like a lot of history of saying that just because I thought it was kind of funny. Mm -hmm. But meet, they meet me, I'm like, oh, he's six eight. Like I, uh, but I stopped lying because I realized it helps. Yeah. So just say my real height. Yeah. Six eight is tall. It's you're, like what? You're like a giant. Two meters? About two meters tall. Oh my goodness. Is it big? Is part of the reason you like smaller girls because you're so tall? Do you like that? Like the difference? I wouldn't. I wouldn't say so. I uh, I've been I've been asked that a couple times lately. I think um, I like. Uh, I feel like they usually have more spunk. They have a lot of pizzazz. Shorter shorter women. Uh, it might just be like you know the situations I've been in and the people that I met, but. Uh, I like like a real boisterous woman, mm. like a loud, like will get mad about something or like fight somebody if they have to, like a tough little really? little bit. And and the <laughs> small ones are spicy. They're yeah. like little chihuahuas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, and dogs. That's chihuahua. Yeah. Okay. That's not that's not related to dogs, but yeah, like a small, loud woman is is my type of lady. Yeah. yeah. I have never heard a man say that. Yeah. Oh, loud. We'll fight someone. I mean, like <laughs> at my height, it doesn't really matter. Like, like I've I've gotten with girls that were six feet tall. Like for me, it's not that weird. Like it's kind of crazy if you were like five five eight dude and you're with a six foot tall girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying that because I went out with my homie and his, his six foot tall girl, and it was pretty enjoyable to to watch them. I would be so obnoxious if, if I was a man and was six eight. Like I'm obnoxious already. <laughs> but my big dick energy would be out of control. <laughs> I just wear the tallest heels possible, so I feel like powerful as much as possible when I go out. If I was six eight, I was just having this conversation with a girl recently. Um, if you were a man, like, first off, what would you look like? Give me all the details, and and what would your your type be of woman? That's, oh, that's, that's a, a good, good question, question. Yeah. damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never thought about this. I mean, in my mind, I would look like Ryan Reynolds, but in reality, I'd probably look like Steve Carell. <laughs> no, no, you get to pick. <laughs> you get to pick. Like, I'm delusional. <laughs> you could be anything. You could be anything. Your, like, your hotness, your current hotness translates to your male form. But so does my delusion as well? A little bit. Yeah, so Steve Carell. <laughs> Steve Carell, but, okay. But Steve Carell yeah. in his, like, 50s because he got better looking as he got older. Because um, I'll be mad specifically. I I would want to be a short, boisterous Colombian, like, tweaker. Like, a, a loud girl with a lot of energy. <laughs> I guess I'm kind of thinking about my type. Like, a Sofia Vergara, but... If she was... A little bit littler. Five yeah, years. yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to make it feel like I have, like, this thing with little, smaller women, but I just... <laughs> It's kind of sounding like that right now. It's just, that was just like, it happened a few times and uh, just by chance, you know. I think a lot of women find it hot when it's a really tall guy with a really small girl. Oh, it happens a lot where, yeah. well, like my ex who was 4'10", sorry to interrupt you, we would go out and uh, drunk girls would come up and be like, oh my God, how does it work? Like, yeah. how is it? And like, people, yeah, people love that. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a thing. Girls love a... High difference. Really. Honestly, I've always liked taller men, but in the last couple of years, I, it's not that I don't like taller men, but I used to always say, like, I, I don't want somebody even my height. I kind of like shorter guys now, too. Like, it just doesn't really? matter anymore. I love that. Yeah. I think it's I think it's cute. And cute translates to hot to me. I think that's also, I was going to say this earlier, I think that's part of why, like, maybe I've ended up with a few girls who weren't that tall, because, like, 
if I'm dating someone, I want them to be cute. Yeah. You know, like I'm hooking up with someone hot, but like if they have a lot of acute to them, like that's a girlfriend material. You want a lot of personality. Personality, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But also like cute and wholesome and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, I guess short girls are wholesome and cute a lot of times. I think it just works out that way for you. Yeah, I think you're right. Sounds like you go for all ages too. Mm-hmm. I, I know that it's it's out there that you love MILFs, but it kind of seems like you just love all women, right? Yeah, that, that you know, it was, it was a branding thing, you know, I wanted to... It was so brilliant. You know, make myself a <laughs> little... Brilliant stand apart. A l- little different. Uh, and it worked a little bit better than I expected, but um, yeah, I don't discriminate. I, I you know... Both the girls I've dated were like my age or, or younger. Mm. I've been with a, a decent amount of older women, but like I'd say the average is close to my age. How old are you? 27. Okay. When I was first trying to get with older women and I would like, I guess in my early 20s, I would, you know, say a much older age, you know, not, not in like a full on line to your face way, but like I'm in a bar, I'm alone. I have like a, you know, like a fancy shirt on. Like I want to seem like a, a grown man who's you know here on a business trip and <laughs> i would like i remember there being a really clearly remember a time at the dream hotel in in uh no phd i don't know this is rooftop in new york city i think it's on the dream hotel or some hotel and there's a woman i met and we got along really well and all like we, we got all the all the way to my room like we flirted for an hour like an hour and then we went back down to my room in the hotel and when we were at the door she was like how old did you say you were and i was just honest and i said 20 yeah. and she said bye like <gasps> fuck you like bye that is weird and i was like oh shit i was like my, my bad like how old was she probably like 30 to 35 it wasn't it was not that big of a difference no. it was just like maybe she just assumed because i didn't say an age maybe she just assumed i was her age and then i just it was a surprise yeah uh but yeah i was like I mean, damn i would feel weird. i find that odd though if she's so sexually weird. attracted to you that she made it all the way up to the room like then it really is just a number at that point in my head yeah i think maybe the fact that i wasn't 21 was like you know i think if i would have said You're 21 wrong. it would have been different yeah but 20 is like you know I mean, I'll have like Jeez. nineteen or twenty year olds my DMs and or asking me out. I'm like, I can't. Like, I just, I mentally can't. I can't do it. It's not even that big of a difference, but it's. I just, I feel like I'm robbing the cradle. For me, <laughs> like, yeah, it feels a little creepy, but also below a certain age, I feel like it, I just do not get along with people as well. Like, True. I not really like I, we don't like each other, but just don't relate to the same things yeah. at all. I, I understand that as well. Like, I, I can't hang out with uh, early 20s too much. Yeah. Because I feel like we have nothing in common, and I feel like an outsider. So I feel like I've gone on dates with girls that were 20 years older and then girls that were five years younger, and I felt like I was closer to the older one. Because yeah. I don't know, with the internet and all the stuff that's going on, they just there's a lot of different personality types and drama and stuff. Yeah, I feel like I've always been an old soul. Like, even at 20, I was like, I don't feel like a kid. So now I really can't hang out with 20 year olds. If I'm in an event, there's a bunch you of- You don't hang out with 20, or you do? No, I-, I You don't do. hang out with 20 year olds? No, I feel like even when, I, even when I was 20, I felt too old to be hanging out with 20 year olds. We just weren't interested in the same things. I'll tell you, yeah, most of my friends are like 30, 30 mid thirties. I'm like the weird young yeah. exception, but I just feel like people, for me, like, I don't know, like the millennial, like if you're born between the, like in the nineties at some point, I, we all relate you know we all got along really well yeah life just changed after 2000 yeah. <laughs> i wonder if they say that every generation though for sure <laughs> Probably, yeah. it it's such a drastic difference though <laughs> yeah. it's crazy but the, yeah i feel like the difference between us and the next 10 years is a lot bigger than let's say because of the versus, boom in technology yeah with all, i, yeah, like I the, think so too all that shit i mean the start of the internet boom of the internet in the early 2000s was the biggest thing to ever happen to the world. Mm-hmm. It completely changed everything. Because y'all had flip phones, right? I yeah. had a pink Motorola. Yeah. Which I want. I yeah. did yeah. too. Yeah. Mine was like a pinkish purple. Yeah. I remember iPhones dropped when I was like 15 or 16 and like one kid got it at our school and it was like, oh my God. But now everybody on earth 
just is born with an eye. Like they get iPhones at like age 12 now. I was I was talking to um, one of my makeup artists and her daughter was getting made fun of at school for not having an iPhone at 11. Holy. Which at is- 11? Mm-hmm. I, I didn't even get a photo until I was like 17. Same, 16. At all. I, think I didn't I even, But I didn't even want one either. Like it was, I didn't feel left out. I just didn't. I was like, I don't want my parents to be able to contact me. Like, <laughs> ask where I am. <laughs> Why would I want that? Like, you know, you disappear after school. I'm like, sorry, I, I had no, they had no way of getting in contact with me. So That's such a hot home. girl thing, though. Only a hot girl would be like, I don't need a phone because everyone just finds me somehow. <laughs> like, I was at the library studying. Okay, you know, I what? was, You're right. <laughs> I was like, Why didn't you want your parents to know that? That sounds like something I would tell them. I, I was like, no, I can't. She's like, because you won't believe me. I was like, you pay that. for college on your own, just going secretly, just doing your own college thing. Um, no, I was actually back. just like a really, really, really big nerd. So really? I, yeah, oh, yeah. That's wholesome. No, like truly. That. Yeah. But why wouldn't you want your parents to know that? Because they will like get a life. People oh. like never believe me. <laughs> People they, like never believe me. So how do they feel now? I mean, now they question my life choices, but I was, but you, they told you to get a life and you did. So that is true. This is your fault. If you're watching this. Yeah. I mean, you did your thing. No, I know. I really should have gone through that phase. I think I just hit it later. I, I, you know, people go through their rebellious stage at like 17, 18. Yeah. I hit it like 10 years later. I think, that, yeah. <laughs> I think I hit mine at 19 because my, my, my mom was always very uh, casual. She, I could tell her anything. Like if I would go ha- hang out with friends, she would say, um, just don't get in a car if they've been drinking. Call mm-hmm. me and I'll come pick you up. Like she was mm-hmm. always very cool and, and just with anything. I have the same relationship. Have the talk, like here, mom. pack condoms, like just tell me and be safe. My mom and I are like so close and are so straight with each other about everything that people like sometimes get uncomfortable because like we'll just literally say anything like, like, oh, mom, I got a girl coming over. Just don't come in my room for a couple hours. Like I'm going to be <laughs> flapping cheeks. Like she's like, like, me and her are mad tight like that. Wait, when and, you were a teenager? Well, I'm, I'm talking about like now, but but also, I mean, yeah, for the last like clapping cheeks. Ten years. I hate that <laughs> thing. <laughs> I hear it too much. You don't like clapping cheeks? No, it's it's so time. unromantic. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it is Let romantic. me clap those cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a good, it's just, it's just it, I don't know. It sounds good Silly. when you say it out loud. You know, I, I rap that a lot because it's, it's considered clean. What's the girl version of clapping cheeks? I don't know. I want a girl version of that. Um, Man, any, any, any. Ad- I think it's just clapping just- cheeks. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, it's just, I'm not I mean, clapping, not clapping the, I mean, your cheeks are being clapped. Yeah. I mean, they're. <laughs> <laughs> they are, they're clapping. Uh, I want to go say like, of that. You know, like, I don't know. I want to think of a really good one that we can spread. Uh, I want to women's equivalent. Be on the phone yeah. and say something completely demoralizing <laughs> in front yeah, of them. You could say riding rod. You could say <laughs> rod. <laughs> I'm riding rod. Riding rod. You could say. Um, I'm gonna ride some rod later. Yeah, I'm uh, jumping on Johnson. All right, I'm gonna chill out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like both of those. I'm gonna use them. <laughs> hey babe, you want me to jump on your Johnson real quick? No, I'm, I feel like all men would love that. Yeah, we would like that a lot. <laughs> we would like. Oh, I'm gonna think about it. I'll report back. This is this is for science. Mm-hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna see how it goes. If anyone's mildly offended, I would have succeed, would have succeeded. Yeah. I, as a rapper, I feel like I end up saying a lot of things that you know are common in hip hop and in my lyrics, and then I say them to like a real person, and. <laughs> I realize that they're not, you know, in the same yeah. circle as me, and I'm just I look so crazy. I like, what's up, mommy? Like, let me mommy. let me clap. Like, <laughs> oh, wait, no way you say that. I may have said that at some point. Yeah, we are kind hey, of mommy with her at me... that point, right? Yeah, yeah, I roll with it, but like, if they don't know what I'm talking like about, like you guys it's... have already been hooking up when you say that. It's not like a first time. Hey, mommy, let me. <laughs> <laughs> probably, yeah. First probably. time. Hey, mommy, let me clap. <laughs> If I really had trust in this woman that we would get along well, then yes. Okay. But like, interesting. Yeah. I wonder. Well, we probably would have, would have had to have met, and then, and then I'm sliding in. You know. Okay. I'm not really I on that anymore. I, I I'm a little bit less of a hoe now. Um, but I I was. I'm sure it works though. It's worked for you quite a few times. Uh, yeah. 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 So less of a hoe now. Less of, less of a hoe. Yeah. Okay, we're coming out the other side of the curve. 
I'm kind of, yeah, I've kind of been chilling. Um, I had a girlfriend for a year mm-hmm. and uh, I was loyal and that was a crazy feeling. It was cute. Um, <laughs> it was not cute. that I wasn't before that, but I had been a long time <laughs> until I, uh, you know, was loyal to somebody. And that was, uh, it was a good time. I became like more of a dad. Like I was reading all the time. I still read books and shit, but I would like go to bed earlier and stuff. Like I was just like, oh, I don't have anything reason to be up. Like, uh. did you guys do it together? Like, would you plan? No, it was long. It was long distance. Mm-hmm. You did a, a year long distance. Mm-hmm. I've never had a not. Well, I guess in high school and like part of college, I had like sort of not long distance. But like, I travel so much now that pretty much always long distance. I can't do long distance. There's any like serious, serious ones for long distance, yeah. Okay. But I would see her like, I don't know, twice a month. That's okay. And for a couple of days, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, no. Then, then you take a break. And then when and then when you're when you're together, you make it it's more fun. You know, it's like oh, yeah. you make it worth it. I'd yeah. much rather someone be present with me for a couple of days and then we both go our separate ways and they see them again rather than yeah. just be like spaced out every time I'm with them. Yeah, I I don't even know the feeling. I've never lived with a with a girl that was my significant other. I can imagine. I do long term relationships, and I'm I I wouldn't say codependent because I can be by myself, but I do like them to be like my best friend ever. Yep. So I get sad when they leave. <laughs> like I I just want them around all the time. I get really and sad. And vice versa. It's usually it has to be a mutual thing. Yeah. If for me, I I guess this isn't common I, I learned but i love staying in touch with an ex and being friends because like the feeling of like oh i've spent a, a year flag? with this just a graphic of a red flag here right now we don't like this okay <laughs> that's a green flag not, not like we're not like we're hooking green, up green not like we're hooking up i think i'd yeah the flag is more on the green end of things uh i'm talking like we like we could randomly see like a memory from a year ago and like text it to each other and like be homies like I feel like I have exes where like they have boyfriends now mm-hmm. and they just told the boyfriends like, yo, I'm homies with Matt. It's all good. And like, I can like text them and be like, yo, I hope, I hope your boy's doing well. I hope everything's mm-hmm. good. Like I like just, that's okay. The feeling of like spending that much time with someone and being that close with them and then not ever talking again. is just, I don't like that. It's weird. I mean, I haven't ended on bad times with anyone except one, I have but one. Um, yeah, just one. we just don't really keep in touch. I, th- I think for me, it's like more out of, I wouldn't want to text them because they're like in relationships and I don't want to be that ex that is like disrespectful of their current relationship. Yeah, of course. I, I had an ex where it was going really well after the fact and like I got over it and she had a boyfriend, everything was cool. And then and then uh, a tape dropped on the internet of me sexing her and it was just, it was just so hectic. She like came, I hadn't talked to her in a year and she hit me up and she was like, I don't give too much detail, but yeah, there was, a, there was like a kind of funny sex tape of mine that dropped on Twitter. I didn't some, hear about this. Some hacker and um. Oh no! <laughs> how was how was she? I feel like that. She was pressed. She was she was pretty unhappy. I hadn't yeah. talked to her in a long time, and that was the first reintroduction after like a year. So she wasn't happy, but I I figured it out. Mm. Mm-hmm. I found somebody else to take the take the. Was her face in it? Oh. That's not. Let me see this clip. <laughs> Let me see this clip before we before y'all drop it. Yeah, so yeah of course. Yeah, yeah. Cut off. The- yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Well, I could. Yeah, I could just imagine that being such a traumatic thing for a girl. Yeah, I felt really bad. She wasn't in like in that industry at all, or in music or entertainment or anything. Yeah. Like completely normal person doing like Midwest things. And um, oh, that's a lot. Yeah. So I was yeah. like, yeah. and that happened after you guys had separated. Yeah, like a year later. Oh. And it was like kind of funny, like the video is kind of funny. It's like, I'm like smiling at the camera. <laughs> was it, you took it yourself? Yeah, I mean, it was me filming and then like I'd set the f- camera down and it like turns around, like the camera like turns around on the pillow and I just was like, all right, word up. And I'm like looking at, into the camera. Oh my God. <laughs> whoever hacked me, honestly, whoever hacked me, like thank you for dropping that over like anything else I had. Were there like, worse things? I mean, I wouldn't say worse, but just like, it wouldn't be like funny or cool to drop like just a normal video of me just clapping me just having <laughs> having sex say with somebody. It, say it, say it. Uh, you, say it you can say, you it, say, you say it. it. I'm just clapping cheeks. Yeah, there we go. This, this was like, this was hilarious because it like, right when it dropped, I remember all the comments were just like, yo, like, I don't know what to say, but that is definitely Young Gravy. Like, I, <laughs> it was just so obviously me. Like, was the, the camera turns around, I'm like, up close and I'm smiling and it's like, there's no, like, this is 
hundred percent young gravy. Like, yeah, don't you don't really have a face that people could mistake for someone else. And I was talking, and uh, yeah, I was. All, <laughs> yeah, but but like basically, you couldn't see, you couldn't really see my dick, and then I was smiling at the end, and people kind of thought it was funny and wholesome compared yeah. to like a what it could have been weird aggressive one that yeah it, have you know. I mean, it could have been worse. Thank God they picked that one. You know. <laughs> It was, it was like else. wholesome. <laughs> like a wholesome sex tape. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe they picked that one because they thought that was the funniest. Yeah, if, if definitely. Anyone... It would not have blown up like it did if, if it hadn't. Yeah, if anyone leaks shuffled. anything of mine, please just choose a wholesome video. Please. Yeah. Like, that's my like request. Just make me look good. I don't think I would actually care if somebody hacked my my son class <laughs> like <laughs> it's all been seen before like, <laughs> like, <damn it. laughs> like yeah. you're gonna find porn and puppies have you ever been hacked your phone no no thankfully i feel like you'd be a prime target <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just saying yeah. really i don't think so it's already out there i'm not mean, it's not like i keep my nudes to myself <laughs> like, i get yeah i don't really know what they would do on with you I was going to ask something. It's, it's a weird question. At 27, do you feel like an adult still? Or do you feel like not, or do you not feel your age? I do feel like an adult, uh, especially in the last like year. Um, and when you think of yourself, do you think I'm a man? Yeah. Because all my friends that I grew up with are doing like nine to five jobs and are getting married and stuff. And for a long time, I was just the guy who would show up in town when there's a wedding and be fucked up and have a good time. And then, I mean, yeah, I settled down for like a year, which changed things a little bit. And also, I just got old enough where now, I'm like, if I get hungover, it's like two days long yeah. rather than one. And uh, I don't know, I go to like I sleep a lot you know I sleep sleep <laughs> is I, that what being a man is? I don't know I used to sleep like six hours adult, I get hung over for two days I sleep a lot <laughs> yeah I mean being a man like as far as normal man things I think I've done most of the, the things a man wants to do but physically I feel like an adult now rather than like a young man you know like I'm mm-hmm. you know I'm like trying to find a wife and like trying to spread my seed you know okay nice <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, I feel like it goes back and forth for me. Sometimes I'll feel very mature and it's mainly when I'm around early 20s. (laughs) And then other times I'm like, how? How am I 30? How? (laughs) Like Mentally, it's not here. So you're trying to find a wife and have kids? Yeah. Eventually. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's like a five-year plan, a 10-year plan? That's a good question. I'm 20. I would say like seven-year plan. Right in the middle. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Not five, not ten, but yeah, yeah somewhere in, the, in there. Unless, you know, I maybe I'll meet somebody on the way home, get sprung, mm-hmm. and just be right into it. I don't know. Yeah, it's LA. I've had a few girlfriends where I where we discussed, like, baby names and, like, wedding and, like, where to live in the future and stuff. So, like, I've definitely plotted on the concept. You've, like, tapped your, tapped your toe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like- yeah. Okay. Tapped my toe. What's the what's the American version of that? Dipped my toe. Dipped my toe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, I have done that. Well, what's the longest relationship that you've had? Like two and a half years. It's a good amount. Of For me, that was pretty long. Yeah. Yeah. All my girlfriends before that were like six months. Um. And long distance, it's you know. I don't know. That was good. It was a good time. Did you not miss each other? We did, but we talk all the time on like Facetime. I like long distance. I don't mind it either. Yeah. As long as you see each other every once in a while, it's kind of nice. Everyone hates it. I did it for a few years and I was like living back and forth between here in Australia. And it was great because when I was home, I wasn't really working and I was like very present. And then I was traveling all the time when I was here, I was working. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Like for me, it worked. Are y'all in relationships right now? I am. You are? Mm-hmm. Long distance or not? No. No. <laughs> no. Right, right at home. Okay. <laughs> no, we live together. I think that I have like a little bit of a dependence. Like I don't like being alone. No, never. Just, just a little. <laughs> no. Just a little. It's it's not it's not bad to the point where it's toxic, but um, <laughs> I'm very much an introvert, and I don't really have friends. And when I get in a relationship, I decide they're my best friend. And Gabby, yes, we're on our way to being friends. <laughs> 
but <laughs> I was like, okay, like, we're on our way. Truly, but uh, I don't know. I also kind of have like half of my personality that I hide from everybody. It's <laughs> what's that? What it, what is it? What's over there? It's just very quirky and silly, and just I I don't know. I I don't um like I'm just really really dorky and quirky. And I can't show that until I've lived with someone for over six months. Most guys, oh, okay. Do you live with someone for six months? Yes. <laughs> Most guys like that, obviously, but yeah, I guess living Six with months? That's, that is six wild. months. So, so even people who are pretty close to me, they don't see like half of my personality. I always make sure within the first like date <laughs> to show that I'm weird or like that I'm, you know, it, with whatever. Like I always make sure that like I say some crazy shit just okay. so that they know that I'm like- mm-hmm. You know, yeah, you so test, like you test the, the waters. You like yeah. sprinkle it out there, and you're like, "Do they like it?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't do it with the jump scare. Like I just really couldn't. It comes out of time. With someone, <laughs> if I was living with someone, I just got fucking weird one day, <laughs> and they were like, "I'm not down with this." You got like, you 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 What do you do? Guy, he just you comes just, in the room. He's like, "Hey, hey mommy, <laughs> let me clap them cheek." Just, <laughs> I hear that daily. After six months. <laughs> That's why yeah. I had that reaction. I hear that daily. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Mommy? Not the mommy part. Okay, okay. I was going to say that. That's like my I thing. hear the clap the cheeks daily. And, and when I'm talking mommy, I just want to make it clear that when I say mommy, it's M-A-M-I. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm not talking M-O-M-M-Y. <laughs> yeah, I just want that to be very clear. <laughs> like the good mommy, the right mommy. <laughs> not the weird just, mommy. <laughs> yeah. Can you elaborate on what kind of weird? Because I, how do you keep that in? Like I'm, it doesn't like come first naturally. Date, I'm I, fucking it, weird. It doesn't come naturally if I'm not comfortable. Mm. Like, so you're not comfortable. You're, no, you're not gonna do something I, weird. No, I honestly, I feel like um, I I talked to my therapist about it when I was seeing him. <laughs> Because I, I do think that I'm neurodivergent or something is wrong with me with how introverted I am. And I've just always, no matter what group I've been in, even if I get along with people and I like we have really good conversations and we start to get close, I feel like I've never fit in anywhere with anyone except when I get in a relationship and I finally can like kind of show, like feel comfortable and show 100% of my personality. Then I feel like I fit in. That makes sense. You have anxiety? Yeah. I was going to say it's probably anxiety talking. I've felt that way before, but I know that it's kind of... Like social anxiety. Yeah, my anxiety talking. I mean, yeah. I get that. I like hate being in crowds. and like rooms with a lot of people or just people I don't know in general. I, I get energy from that. Like I, I cannot... I get really depressed if I'm, if I'm in a small town for a lot, more than a few days. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes on tour, we'll end up in, you know, a town of like 30,000 people for a couple of days during some off time. And it's like... I could never, I could never do that. I need to be around like new people. That's why I love LA. Cause like I can go anywhere and I love my friends, but I'm also, I love to just go and like meet someone brand new and just mm-hmm. kick it with them. Like I, I'm, I would say I'm like fully extroverted, but it gives me energy to, you know, meet new people and yeah, I mean, learn there's, things. And, there's like two types of people, people that get drained. Their energy is like drained from being around people and then people who get energy get the <laughs> yeah. from being around people. Yeah. I need like days to recover after socialization. <laughs> <laughs> I get it though. I do like I do love a nice, you know, solo moment, you know, like a nice night where you're just not doing shit talking to anybody. Yeah. I, I need that pretty often too. I do yeah. too. I mean, I don't mind how busy LA is. I like that I was still telling me before, like I like it's if you you can be very anonymous. I don't know about you. Yeah. But like you no, can you just can. go anywhere and you can be around like a group of people or like you go to the supermarket or wherever and there's a lot of people around so you don't feel alone but it's no one you know like if i was in my yeah. hometown i couldn't go anywhere without running into someone i went to high school with mm-hmm. or like an old teacher or my siblings friends or parents or something and it's like not a small town but la you can just i, I would say la is with fame too i'm sure you both of y'all have witnessed it like people here I get approached so much less in LA by people than I do anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Like here, it's almost always casual. People get it. They see famous people and they will just come up and maybe be like, oh, can I have a picture? Be nice. Or like mm-hmm. try to give me a hug. But if I'm in a smaller town and I'm in the Midwest or the South, it's like I don't have people chasing me around and stuff. And it's Chasing you around? I, yeah. Savannah, Georgia, one time I had like 50 people chasing me and I was running. <laughs> 
Like on the street? Yeah, like on the street. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, they, they were like just drunk college kids, but I was like, holy shit. They could have trampled you to death. <laughs> no, yeah, I was, I, yeah, I had to get out of there. Like, um, like after a show, they just chased before them. the show, yeah. You were just running away from the venue? <laughs> I was, I was just nearby and I was going to like a bar and then I was like, oh shit, I had to run back. Were they all women? Mostly women, yeah. Nice. Was like, there, there yeah. Was He's living every man's dream. What did they get up <laughs> There were some boyfriends in there, but yeah. Was... <laughs> running after their girlfriends? Yeah, like running with them. I don't know what they're doing. like, fuck? Like, <laughs> your girlfriend just you know, runs off to Young Gravy. You're like, cool. <laughs> Hey, that's I would run. I don't know if I would be a member. <laughs> <laughs> I would partake. I don't know. I don't even I'm trying know. to be a good boyfriend, you know. Yeah. If my girl, like, if we see, like, let's say Peso Pluma or some, you know, I just, I think he's sexy bastard. I, if my girl's chasing Peso Peso Pluma. Oh yeah, the guy from Knockers. Right? Mm, Did so I that's fuck Pedro that up? Mescal. Damn it! <laughs> big uh, up, country. Oh, yeah. He's a big. Uh, I almost said country Mexican mm -hmm. artist who's been popping off. Anyways, I was near a show that he was doing, and it was all these girls like running up and getting excited. And I feel like, in, in that case, you know, I'm like, you know what, girl, like go, <laughs> don't cheat on me, but like go, do your thing. like <laughs> let me let me come up, pull up, just like you know? some eye candy. Yeah, what about, like, like look, thunder down, down under. Look, hmm? what about something like thunder down under? <laughs> How would you feel? Is it, oh, the all the Australian stripper, the strip show. In is Vegas? that what they call it? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I just I've know, never I, seen it. I I've heard it used as it. like a pickup line before, like <laughs> trying to give you that thunder down under. No, <laughs> there's a better. There's a better way. That, <laughs> <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> there was a smoother way that people put it. I couldn't think of, tell you what it was, but um, so it was an actual strip group. It's yeah. a strip show in Las Vegas. I have, it's like Chippendales but the Australian version I don't go to Vegas enough I don't, I don't really know my Vegas they're no. just really hot buff Australians dancing around and humping on women they bring up to the stage dudes yeah yeah oh okay oh that looks lit right yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's like Magic Mike style yeah, yeah. Like I would I would enjoy watching that yeah. I would go there I uh when I right when I turned 18 I went on a trip to Montreal with some friends and we went to a women all a strip club with women stripping, and then we went in the same night to a men's strip club. And I got <laughs> I got I got kicked out of the, the men's of the men's one, yeah, because I was I mean I was like flirting with women in there and yeah, that's and like taking some attention away, and they literally were like they carried me out. They're like, get this kid the fuck out of here. <laughs> that's such a good idea for guys. To go, yeah, I thought so too. Until oh yeah, that's brilliant. I get why they why they kick you out because it's like oh right, you're stealing these girls are all in their zone right now and you're just kind of sliding in at a good time and <laughs> stealing I, our I mean, ones for like for like a pickup spot a regular strip joint like the girls just gonna take your money mm -hmm. and that's it but if you go to a male strip show there are so many women there exactly. there are bachelor Aww. parties birthday parties. I'd recommend it. I mean, I don't know if they I'm do just, the same thing here, but yeah, I'd say any man watching this, you should go. Should that's go actually out. a really good check tip. Go check out a male strip club. I feel like I've heard there's a really good brothel in Montreal. Brothel? That's a very different thing. Right? Is it? That's like prostitution. Isn't it? Yeah. Is it legal? Is it Montreal? I don't know. They have a lot of strip clubs there. There's I'm a red sure. light district there. Okay, so it is, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, hey, no, hey. If I was a guy, I'd love brothels. Honestly, <laughs> I think it's really interesting. I've gone to um, the red light district in uh, Frankfurt in Germany. Yeah. And I went to the one in Amsterdam and like me and my assistant uh, at the time and my tour manager, we just we just walked through all of the like it's like basically a hotel where like these girls have to like rent out. It's not all girls. These folks have to rent out a room and then they pay like a certain amount per hour. And then like they have to just get enough customers to like over like you know to pay for that yeah um like so we were like it's like a hotel and we were just walking through these floors and just like looking at like every room it's like you know sucking fuck 40 euro whatever how much, how much is that yeah it's <laughs> cheap like 45 bucks maybe 50 i don't know mm. but it was just i mean we we I, I was scared to, to do anything but we, we walked through all the floors and it was really interesting just to like i feel like, like hi like hope you're well i feel like hand jobs, <laughs> I feel like hand well. jobs are safe they safe and what? <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> I feel like hand jobs are safe. Hand jobs are, yeah. 
(laughs) I'm pro women. Like I'm pro even that sex industry because if it is, um, it it is very true that once it's uh, illegalized, it's a lot more unsafe for the women who are going Mm -hmm. to do it, Mm -hmm. and they're going to do it no matter what. Yeah. And like I said, if I was a guy, 100%. 100%. It'd be like my favorite thing. Seeing escorts? I so badly, yeah. yeah. Have you ever seen that um, one movie with Haley Joel Osment when he was, a, he was a little boy and he's a robot? What's it called? Has Jude Law in it? It's older? Oh, AI. AI. They have a, a Jude Law sex robot at the beginning, and that's always been my fantasy. A Jude Law sex robot? He was, in, yeah, yeah. Oh, mm. my God. I remember him from... I, I don't often feel attraction to men, but there was a time where uh, <laughs> the, talented, be it. the talented, the talented Mr. Ripley. Ripley. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I was like, all right, it comes down to it. <laughs> Jude Law. Wait, wait, Mia, yeah. that's that's your fantasy? A Jude Law sex robot? Wait, can you type in, can yes. you type in the one I'm talking about? Uh, talented, Mr. talented Mr. Ripley. You should watch the scene. Because it's, send it to me? It's so I'll good. send it to you. You, you would understand why, I, if that existed, mm-hmm. I would pay for it every night. <laughs> okay. Oh, he's hot there. He's- look, yeah, look at that first picture. Come on now. I think his butt cheeks were out at one point. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> he said, okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of- I mean, I thought, I thought those cheeks. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just- I, could, I, could use, I could use clap those cheeks with that one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, good work. I've always been a massive fan of Jude Law. I think he's aged very well too. Like he looks good for his age. And that's like a that's distinguished your gentleman. Fantasy. How do you feel about the your Aussie? How do you feel about the the Hemsworths? Because whenever I go to Australia, I y'all are so obsessed with those guys. I am. And I look. Are a, you? Yeah, of course. I have like a <laughs> slight resemblance. And whenever I go to Australia, everyone's like, "Oh my god, are you Hemsworth!" Like <laughs> they're like legends there. Um. Yeah, they're very talented actors. Sounds yeah. like you're you're hiding something. I don't know what. No, I'm not hiding anything. They're, I, they're I have really a, talented actors. I have a, I have you know? a different they're type. sexy. They're sexy. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I, yeah. Talented, do their thing. Yeah, I mean, a lot of guys in Australia look like that. I think. All right. Well. I mean, I have a, I have a different type. They say, maybe they just say it to me to hype me up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> to hype. Wait. Uh, what, what do they say? Know, Australian girls mm-hmm. will always say that to me. That uh, I look like I'm related to the Hemsworths. Yes, you do. Oh, I do. They do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now no, I'm not sure that's a compliment. I wasn't sure if that was just like a... Like a... I, have a I have a different type, which is, yeah. What's your type? Um, My first crush ever was Eminem. And that explains all my issues with men forever. <laughs> Eminem? <laughs> yeah. It was my first ever CD, which was a huge red flag. I get it. I mean, what? So, like, men that are a little bit smaller and have a higher... In my mind, he's six foot five. Okay. But it's it's just the all the red flag. Which album? Tattoos. Which album? Uh was it Real Slim Shady EP in nineteen ninety nine? So good. I get it. So good. Respect. My mom tried so hard to get me into the Backstreet Boys. Or like NSYNC. She's like, Can you please just like put oh. these posters on the wall? And I was like, No, I love him. <laughs> okay. I'm in my height five eight. Hey, almost. Yeah, that means five been- seven. Yeah, the, the dust yeah he's you, probably my height. So that's my what name? I do. I put five eight. Can you tell my name and see if it has it or not? I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Oh, I already looked it up. It, it says six eight. But I was also talking about Eminem without the bleach blonde hair. Of course. Yeah. Without it. No, with it. I mean, with, with it, it too. Yeah. That's your type. Yeah, but it's more like the talent and everything else that goes along with it. Oh, mm-hmm. look at that! How <laughs> <laughs> sweet of them. <laughs> the only time they um, got it right. Yeah, no, I, I you know, I, it's my my fault for lying a lot, but <laughs> yeah, actual thing on my ID says six eight. Is that the only thing you've lied about? No, you mean just ever? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just like being publicly. Um, that's a good question. What have I lied about? Um, not really. Like, if I'm on a podcast or something, I'm just you know, I don't really have much to lie about. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't. I cheated on my first girlfriend and then I learned my lesson there. I was like, I'm over that. Like, it made me really sad. How'd you get caught? I didn't get caught. I just felt really bad. That's so nice. Thank you. <laughs> this was like in, in like high school, but I remember doing that and then feeling so guilty that I just don't lie anymore. Okay. Yeah. So we can cut this out too. 
have you have you cheated since? Mm-mm. Oh, okay. It's the one and done. Yeah. And your conscience was so heavy. I was yeah, I was hurting. That's hurting. so nice. <laughs> well, thank you. If I'm in a relationship and and it's not you know making sense, like I'll say, oh, let's take a break and but do our own thing, and mm-hmm. like I might hook up with somebody else, but I don't know. It's not really the. If I'm like in love with a girl, I'm not really interested in other cheeks. Uh, red, <laughs> other cheeks. Red, 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 red. Just those cheeks. Yeah, one pair. Not interested in other cheeks. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start saying this, not even on purpose. It's just going to like pop in my head now. I'm just yeah. gonna... That's it should. Start dropping it. Um, okay, red flag is turning green. Who would have thought? Well, I was red before? Yeah, for sure. Okay, I think just, just being a I... musician, maybe. <laughs> Yeah. 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 I would say, yeah, that's fair. I think yeah. my kind of public stigma isn't always. Just you know, the online persona you probably like built on purpose for yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You know, I, I doesn't scream that. altar boy. Fair. Yeah. I mean, it was great to create a brand where I could kind of, I thought about it from the start. I was like, I want to be able to just say anything and have people accept it. Like, mm. mm-hmm. it's not like I'm saying anything offensive, but just like, I need to be able to just wild out and like, Mm-hmm. I've already said enough crazy shit on music, on songs that I can just, you know, kind of not worry about it and I can really be myself or even, you know, go above and beyond. Um, the mill thing obviously was productive, mm-hmm. was successful. Um, I think that's so much smarter to just start off that way instead of like trying to present a completely different wholesome image, which is so, which is impossible to keep up mm-hmm. and then apologizing for things later. If you just kind of come out the gate saying, Fuck it. Eminem's not the best comparison, but like, you know, he started just saying the most wild shit instantly. Oh. And then came out and dropped more serious music later. Yeah. Um, I was like watching a bunch of his old videos that, I mean, he would be so canceled today and he's never made an apology video and I respect him for that. Yeah, he's I like him all for to. that. People loved it at things, the time. Yeah, things change. Yeah. I, I just saw a video of him performing ass like that at uh, MTV Awards. Such a good song. Awards. <laughs> Such a good and song. I was just like, first off, he's like <laughs> publicly like saying some horny shit to Lindsay Lohan with like a dog puppet. And then uh, he goes up on stage and I was like, I listened to his song. I was like, yeah, he's like, first off, he's using like, a, I don't know what the accent is, Arabic Farsi type accent. And he's like talking about Mary Kate and Ashley when they're under It was like, dude, this oh, is like- in the Indian accent? I think it was like- Maybe it was Indian. I don't know. I, I, I hadn't heard it in forever, but- um, yeah, he's just like wilding out, saying all this stuff where it's like, you have, you said, if I said anything close to this, like, it's game over for me. Oh, yeah, I completely. I, that's like what I listen to at like 6 a.m. in the morning, and everyone's like, this is. I think in like 2018, I said, I love fat hoes in a song, mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> that's, the, that's the most. I, I, that's I, like I most, like that line. Yeah, I, I, was trying to, I was trying to show love. I was, yeah. you know, <laughs> I was just trying to promote them. But uh, at this point, like I hadn't heard anything for years. And then I've had a few people be like, yo, did you say this? And I was like, I don't know. The cancel well, culture has changed a lot, even in the last five years. It's also, though, it, it comes. It's the same with comedians, in my opinion. It's art. Like you're looking for a creative way to say something. I don't. I don't feel like it should just be stigmatized and, and torn apart. And also, if everybody was saying the correct thing, the world would be so boring. Mm-hmm. I like how comedians kind of took a stand on that. Like yeah. we're just we're human, and we're not always our best selves. And who wants to be? But I, I just I just feel like everyone's so sensitive. Like if, if people could say anything about, you know. I'm Jewish, that so people like would make jo- jokes about Jewish people, and I would take no offense to it. I make like at all. I make bad jokes towards my Jewish boyfriend every day. But like, I, I like, <laughs> like in no world would I be offended like, at, ever. Like everyone's just very um, soft. I think I think usually the people that are getting offended are not members of that you know demographic. If they're getting offended about you know whatever it is, it's yeah. it's usually like a white person from Oregon or something. Yeah, always. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> not to not to shut you out, but uh, I'm not from Oregon. Well you all right. I just love the nature out there. There you go. <clears throat> Do you just bend constantly under things? Bend, yeah. Yeah. Yes I Stop. bend. Mm. The average door I think is six foot eight. The average <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do you just like ducking uh, everywhere? Yeah. It's just like like if I walk through a door I kinda 
on most cases I <laughs> my, my, my crib has taller doors but yeah I think the average in the US is six foot eight 80 inches yeah it's six foot eight wow. six foot seven okay see this is seven that's why I duck a little bit okay do you have a custom well, that doesn't shower that make sense 80 why would it be seven if it's 80 I think it's six eight do you have a custom shower or anything like? No, I mean I moved into a house. I, it was custom. Yeah, someone customized it. It's great. You're yeah. definitely it's a got, California king boy too, right? Yeah, California yeah, king. Have to, have to have to. Oh, I can imagine hotel rooms might be difficult. Uh, yeah, in, in Europe, yes. If you go to like Europe or I mean Australia a little bit, y'all. I, I like how y'all are a little bit more American than than the EU. Oh, I don't know why I always yeah. compare, but you know. You guys talk similar, and uh, I'm going. I'm actually I'm going to London, London in like two days. Um, and when we stay there, we always like go out of our way to find a hotel that's like American branded, so that it's yeah. not like two twin beds next to each other and yeah. warm water and everything. <laughs> uh, I I like you know I'll, I'll, we'll find a hotel where I get I always get like the king and yeah I'm fine I'll make it work. I I know that you're a big movie guy. Yes. Love movies. And then I've watched your Tiger Belly podcast, so I have an idea that you like Korean movies, which unfortunately I know nothing about. Okay. Yeah, I do. I love Korean movies. But I've been really big into horror films lately, so I was wondering if you have any good ones. You've been into horror? Yes. Movies? Okay. And it, it's really hard to find a good horror film, in my opinion. Like, it is. It, it could start really strong, but once it gets to the end, usually it all falls apart. It's pretty, yeah, yep, I agree. A lot of them are pretty rough. I watch tons of scary movies. Um, I'm going to just spit some out. Like, I mean, probably my favorite scary movie is either like, I mean, Silence of the Lambs, if oh, you get yeah. of that horror. I don't think that's horror, though. Yeah, not quite. Um, there's a movie called The Wailing. I think I talked about it on the Bobby Lee one. Korean movie, The Wailing is really good. Um, and that one's scary? Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, horror. Oh, okay. It's like it's really if you're down with the subtitles, it's it's I am yeah one of my favorite scary movies. Yeah, The Wailing. I did hear Korean. Oh, oh, okay. I love this. I heard Korean horror films were the best. Yeah, it's like it, it's they're, they're, they are. Um, Hereditary. You seen that? Yeah, I have that one. Is that I, your vibe? Mm, That's up there for me. I thought it was one of the better ones. I don't. I feel like Gabby doesn't watch movies. I'm not a horror movie person. Anything that's Stephen King. Based on a Stephen King book is really good. That one in Midsummer, like, I both thought were really good, but at the same time, they're they're the kind that leave you a little sick to your stomach. Like I feel like something is wrong with the world rather than being creeped out. Like, I feel like I prefer more ghost stories. Have you ever seen The Others? Mm -mm. What? I don't know. Is it, is it a big thing? I don't know. Uh, it's a little older. That one's with Nicole Kidman, but I would say that's one of the best ghost stories I've ever seen. Ghost stories, okay. Something about good ghost ones. Um, Oh, that one, that one, I highly recommend this one. See, horror movies, they got to think of more ways to present the cover. Because it's like, this looks like the same as like The Strangers. It looks the same as like a lot of movies that you'll see. Like they, they just, they don't get creative enough with the, with the. Well, this one's an older film too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm, I'm, even today, they still just, they're still going off this. <laughs> yeah. You know? It looks like every horror film or suspense that you would find. Have you seen Gerald's Game? Yes. I like that movie a lot. I did like that one. Um, the ending threw me off. I felt like the ending took away from the scariness, in my opinion. I feel like I've always been kind of like a defending the ending. Well, that's not <laughs> with, that, with that one specifically? Just every movie ever. Oh, like, okay. <laughs> I, just, I usually like endings, however they are, unless it's like something ridiculous. But when people hate on endings, it's like, yeah, like... They're trying to be creative and cool. Is that because you trust oh. the artist as like an artist yourself? I think so. Yeah, I would say it's because like as an artist, like I mean, I, if I made a movie, I would make the ending crazy and unexpected yeah. and people that can't handle that. It's Oh, yeah. I wouldn't give a shit if people liked it or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one's I feel like it's my creative vision. Just deal with it. Yeah, that one specifically because it, it, spoiler, spoiler. Oh, no, I don't want to spoil it for people. <laughs> I'm too <Spoiler>. nice. <laughs> Actually, I, don't, I don't remember the exact ending, but <laughs> other other Stephen King movies are, are really good. Like ones that are based on his books. The Shining. Shining's Mi always good. Carrie, The Mi Misery. Oh, Misery. All those. Misery's one of the better. I didn't even realize that one was Stephen King. Yeah, it's like 80s, good 80s. Uh, I've seen any of these. You've seen The Green Mile? Yeah, I grew up on The Green Mile. That's one of my favorite Is that movies. Stephen King? 
Yeah, it is. Aww. Yeah. That's so that's such remember. a sad, sad movie. I've seen that actor recently in something. The one I think his name was uh, Dale. Was it Dale? Dale's one of He's the asshole. Dean. There's Dean. Right. Or the the dick is Percy. Per- oh, I, I, just the, I, just read, I just read the I just I just read the book. I so saw what? I saw the actor and I can't separate the in actor person? from Percy. Wait, wait, the what? What? what do you, you saw the actor of Percy in person? No, 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 no. In another film. Oh, oh okay, okay. And I yeah, haven't yeah. seen it like seen him for maybe two. So the dick years. is someone else? <laughs> it, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm pretty sure this that. dude I think I know who you're talking about he like he always plays a, a dick yeah. I don't think he plays a good person ever he traumatized me as a kid I really didn't like what he did and I'm never gonna forget yeah that movie her. it's you should watch The Green Mile <laughs> okay. you, you gotta be ready to cry a little bit and get a little scared can I google the ending beforehand no, no. don't do that I know. hate I it's hate one of, suspense like, it's one of the better films this guy yeah this motherfucker oh, oh he's he such like a little creepy. shit yeah He's like he's like a Joffrey. How would you how would you feel if you try to get into acting and you ended up becoming an like a villain actor? Like I'd love like it. people like him never play a good person. I'd love it. And in his case, it's not like cool I'd, though. You know, like like being like a cool villain. Like I don't know, the dude that comes to mind is like the Westworld guy uh, with the black hat or whatever. Yeah. I don't know, just like a oh, bad yeah. Yeah. Ed Harris in it. Ed Harris. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ed Harris. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. like it. Like that. Like, like he's usually a villain and he's a badass. Like, he was in the Truman Show. Badass mm-hmm. well, villain. Well, people hate you because I, I know Joffrey from Game of Thrones. He quit. <laughs> Thank this is you. a crazy way to start <laughs> this. <Yeah. laughs> this is kind of like, people hate you. <laughs> people hate you. <laughs> he quit acting. Really? really? People couldn't really? separate him from uh, the character. And apparently he's the nicest guy. Are you guy. kidding me? Uh-uh. Everyone was really. I feel like I'd be good die. at. I'd be good at playing a villain. I think. Oh yeah. I could do that. Like a, I don't know if I look like it like as much as Percy does, but I think I could. I'd be good at being mean. Like, like I don't think I could act very well. I've done a little bit of acting, like small cameos and like comedy sketches, and I like acting like a normal person is kind of hard. Yeah. But if I have to like wild out, like I'm good at that. It's easy. You think you'd be a villain? I think I could be a good villain. Yeah, like like a bully. Yeah. You know. Look Me too. Out. You guys would be yeah. bullies. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. he would come more naturally than trying to be very... Like a high school movie where we're like the cool kids and we're like <laughs> dating and we're bullying everybody. Yeah. Slay that. I mean, I do, I do think they need to bring back bullying in 2024. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to keep that in. Call us, that's your call. But, um, it's standing. Bring back bullying. Great kid. I yeah. mean, I, I do say to people, I think we need to bring back bullying. I think a lot of our problems could be solved if, you know. A little bit. Yeah, you know, a little just bit. Just like a little bit. Hurt. It's here, just, though. It's not gone anywhere. Just like social etiquette and like how to behave and mm. in public. You know? Just like a little bit of bullying. And I turned out fine. So. Nobody bullied you. Oh, we're going to, yeah, we're going to talk about this little shape photos of me in Nobody. high school. No, not bullied. Um, I was like a, a really big nerd in high school, but I was also like really good at sport. Um, so that kind of like evened it out. That like you get a pass. But I mean, it wasn't it wasn't cute. Like I wasn't prom queen. The only like at all. The only like bullying that I see is obviously a lot more recent like comments on videos and stuff. You know, there's always going to be a hater. Oh yeah, we get bullied all the time. Yeah. Always, <laughs> always going to be a hater. every day. Like, it's like like but. Be a, I was gonna be a man or woman about it, like face to face. Like, yeah. and if I was gonna bully somebody, I would do it to their face. Yeah. Like a grown adult, I would never do it online. I've never like, like bullied someone online. Like any of us, like you, put the phone down. Like cyberbullying is just you don't have to look at it. Yeah. You know? no. yeah. But like in person, that's that's the real shit. I wonder if they still do that. But not as much. I think everyone's really soft. I'm just if I was gonna bully them, I would do it to their face and look them in the eye i haven't bullied anyone myself but i think i'd like i've witnessed it so i think I, again as an actor i could i could be a dick i don't yeah. think i'm capable of it you're so yeah you're too sweet <laughs> you're so nice <laughs> you look like like if we were in all in the movie i feel like we would be the ones bullying you <laughs> on our, based on our appearance. i'm just trying to i'm trying to imagine if somebody like tries to bully me in person at this point i would actually just cry no wait really yeah i would cry i don't handle that well and then, like, I would, I would go and write them a really nasty text to myself <laughs> and block them after. <laughs> See, like, I know from my experience with road rage in LA, I'd be fine. Like, face to face, I'd be fine. I, like, do you need to pipe down, like, a little bit? You have road rage. Y- yeah. Have you been in the car with me? No. You've been in the car with me. 
Yeah, it's bad. She's driving it's on awesome. the wrong side. You have to be careful though. No, I, I see. Here's my anxiety, and I like turn into a mother. But like L.A., people are crazy. They'll chase you. They'll pull a gun on you. I know. It's not. LA, it's not worth it. Once you drive in L.A., you can drive anywhere because you learn how to. You're not worried about crashing yourself. You're worried about someone else wilding out and hitting you. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. You just got to watch out for everybody. Cause there's well, I'm not, I'm just not a confident driver, so I do worry about me crashing. See, like in Australia, you just wind down the window and someone will yell at you, like, use your fucking indicator, you dickhead. And no one has guns, so nothing bad's going to mm. happen. But here, like, I drive, like, a, a lifted truck, which is all, like, blacked out, and it looks like a dude is driving it, and it's usually, like, heavy rap music, like, and I have like a crazy bass. So like you can hear it coming. <laughs> I wind down the window. It's like a little blonde girl with like a gold retriever in the back seat. <laughs> and then just like what the ringing at someone. <laughs> like I just want to like film their reactions because they're always just like the fuck <laughs> every time. But that's my favorite part. You know? Just the complete dichotomy of what they think they're gonna you get. You just like to go around and bully random people. No, I know. just like people to use their turn signals. I can't at appropriate times. I, I I can't get road rage. I I get it. Everyone I know gets it, and I'll I've seen secondhand road rage. But like, if people fuck me over, I'm just like, oh no, and I'll like <laughs> say no, like I'll like, say something out loud, and then like remember to honk, like you know, thirty seconds later, I'm like, oh, you know, I, I'm just not good at it. I don't know. I can't get pressed. It's like yo, I I I could fuck up. You know, I've definitely yeah, done it. That's why I'm you like have- yeah, like maybe they're busy, maybe they're like stressing out right now, like. But that's Let why you be. have like your four your four foot ten Colombian girlfriend in the passenger seat to wind down the window mm. and yell and at them yeah, for you. See, it's crazy like, shit. That's, yeah, that's her job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's facts. That's exactly right. Oh, I hate that you would cry if someone bullied you. Yeah, I would. I don't handle it well. I'm a little baby, little but I'm baby. a really good like I'm really good on text message. Like I'm very strong there. <laughs> <laughs> when, when was the last time you cried? Hmm? When was the last time you cried? Two nights ago. Why? I lost a notebook. Oh, no God. way. Just, no I, way. I, I, just, I literally see women parts baby. just watching this and <laughs> just breaking. That is so good. I love that shit. I, I, I cry really often, though. Like, I'll cry, like, usually it's like a little, like, tear of joy type deal. But, like, I was listening to, like, this regional Mexican song the other day and I was like this is so good and I just started crying. I was like, I, I, I'm a little baby. You cried because music was beautiful? Yeah. Just it was uh, Javi. This artist Javi. Shout out to him. Uh, La Victima. I would uh, go cry to that if I were you. Go cry to that. Mm-hmm. Just, I literally just, I can just see women watching this. Just like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Join the boyfriends being like, he cries. Like, yeah, let me just, yeah. I'll, can you cry for the notebook? Like the end of, I used to watch Modern Family with my mom a lot. And sometimes, you know, they have like an inspirational ending. I would cry at I the end of show. those episodes. And that show makes me want a family. Yeah. Modern like, Family. Modern Family is really good. And like nothing really makes me want a family, but I watched that and it's kind of dysfunctional and chaotic. It's oh such God. a good show. I would thrive in that. Years. Just as a modern family in the notebook make you cry. That's amazing. I cried a lot in the notebook. Anything that's like sad, sad, I'm going to cry, but usually it's usually tears of like joy, like some happy shit, but like the notebook when like she forgets him and stuff. Oh Uh-oh. my God. On the end when they, never mind. It actually ruins <laughs> my day. Like, if I feel like I need to cry, I'm the type of person that will watch something to get it out, and it will ruin my entire day for hours, I sob. <laughs> like, I, my little heart breaks when I watch things. Like, it, I fall in love, mm. and then my heart actually breaks, and I need to mourn it for hours. You're an empath. And I don't feel okay. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know, but at the no, same I time, I like watching people die in, sh- like, shark attacks. Oh yeah, like real shark attacks. That's true. So I don't have any empathy for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you you become emotionally attached to characters. You yeah, know, very. You don't know what that man was like. He died of a shark attack. Exactly. Like, I don't want to say that. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. Yes. In like yeah. a two-hour movie, you, that, yeah. this character development, you become emotionally attached to the characters the, and your oh, perception of them. What is that one? Um, oh God, it was the TV show that came out not that long ago. It was based off of a video game. With oh, it. Last of Us? Last of Us. Was it the second episode or the third? I don't know. Third I played the game. I haven't watched the Oh, show. the gay episode? Oh, the gay episode. Yeah. Gay? I think 
There's oh. an episode where there are two gay guys. It's like the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It won an Emmy, I believe. Do you want to cry? <laughs> the game is really good. I'm excited you, to watch it. Please watch that. I'm, re- it, I'm replaying the game right now. So are like you? Go in and like watch the movie. The game okay. is so good. If you're a gamer, the movie's so I'm a massive gamer. I I did uh, I did play the first, like for a couple of hours. Um, and I've always meant to replay it. But for some reason, I'm, I'm very much into fantasy. I, if, I don't know. I, if it's something isn't fantasy, it doesn't always hold my interest. I get a little fantasy. I mean, like nerd. giant mushroom people running at you is kind of and dragons fantasy. And, yes. Yeah, I'm just talking about like Last of Us. I mean, it's scary, oh, oh, mm. scary fantasy, but yeah. Isn't it more? Is the show pretty good? Do they make it look like the same? The show's amazing. The show is yeah. amazing. And this episode, if you're sensitive, this is the most beautiful episode that I, one of the most beautiful episodes I've ever seen. And you don't expect it. You don't. I'm sorry. I could cry now. I'm so. Oh no! <laughs> I did this recently. Kind of if I talk about things, I start crying. Uh, really? Yeah, no, but yeah, I I'm such that. a baby. You're like you're just like bumbling. <laughs> it's like a little. Bum. I know. I know. I'm the I'm I'm the most innocent, non-innocent person you will ever meet. <laughs> like, like mentally, I'm innocent, crying. but I don't do innocent things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'm similar. The first time I watched Schindler's List. Uh, I was in high school and I would cry every day for like a week. Really? Just like anything slightly sad, I would just cry. When I watched the actual movie, I cried like 12 times. You also, have you seen Sch- Schindler's List? Yeah, but... oh, People always are like, oh, I'm, we watched well, that in well, school. It's like, oh my God, you watched that in school? I would be embarrassing the shit out of myself, like just bawling in the classroom. I have a funny story about that. Um, Ro- <laughs> this is embarrassing. Romeo and Juliet we had to watch in school, and it was the 1967 version. Mm-hmm. And by the end of it, <clears throat> obviously it's a tragedy. So everyone in the class was laughing and making fun of the film, and I was sobbing. Oh, see that? Yeah, that'd be me. I'd yeah, be that <laughs> I'd be doing the same thing. And if it's Schindler's List, I'd, I'd probably have to leave. I'd go to the bathroom. No, yeah, I I don't understand why they would show that. That that would embarrass. They do that, yeah, in some schools apparently. That is traumatic. I'm yeah. assuming m- many people are crying there, right? Like that's fourteen year olds. I mean, I, I, no, I, I wasn't there. I've never been to a school where they do that, but they do that. I think it's more like an East Coast thing. Yeah, okay. I did that. You did that? Yeah, I did that. Are you from the East Coast? Yeah, Boston. Okay, I don't know how I knew tragic. that. But yeah, I did almost. Yeah, cry. <laughs> they watched them as in school. That's wild. In, in yeah. school, that they showed that. There's a lot more Jewish people there. I think that's part of it. Yeah, in Texas, they it, yeah that wouldn't have been. In Minnesota, we didn't have yeah 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 love Jewish people. But you know, we didn't have many. You're safe. <laughs> <laughs> for now. Wait, do we have time for you to tell us about the camp counselor story? Sure. Yeah, I can talk about it. Okay. Um, well, in Minnesota, uh, up north, during the summer, I would go to this summer camp as a camper, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it was very similar to like Wet Hot American Summer or, you know, like the TV shows about summer camps, like. There's like American horror story okay. season about it. It's all very yeah. similar where it's like horny people going up, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, I started as a kid and I was like 11. <laughs> so no. But then I kept going there every summer. And then when I was 17, I became a counselor there. And um, basically, I just felt like that was where I like really started, you know, trying to be myself and be like unique. And like I started rapping there with some of the other counselors over the campfire. Mm-hmm. And... uh I would like I would teach kids how to sail and it was very wholesome Aww. but uh also just like I don't know I, I stayed t- stayed super tight with all those people and uh I'm gonna make my kids go to a summer camp you know I think it's healthy I think it's yeah. great how old were you I started going there when I was like 10 and then I worked there from like 16 to 21 maybe so were you and the other like female counselors Yes. Yeah. There was a horny things going on for sure. That's yeah. kind of hot. Yeah, I don't want to like expose it, but yeah, it was hot and it was dope. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. My kids aren't going there. <laughs> <laughs> you kidding me? Hell no. <laughs> Once we're counselors, just for the record, we're counselors. They're ultimate, yeah, yeah, ultimate yeah. girls yeah. in the in yeah. synagogue, not the church. They have those in yeah. syn. Oh, okay. I will make it, Carlos. <laughs> They're not going to summer camp. <laughs> Hell no. I know what goes on there now. <laughs> like. I thought it was just in the movies. <laughs> It's like it's like when I would see like American college movies, and I was like, "There's no way that college is like that." Because my university was so boring. No one lived on campus. There's no sororities. There's no fraternities. I mean, the drinking age is 18, so you're going out every weekend anyway. 
But I was like, this is, you know, what's that movie? It was like Party X or something? Project Party X. X. That one. And I was like, there's no way that people go to school and it's actually like this. How do they, how do they study? How do they get anything done? I went to the University of Wisconsin, which is like the top party school in the U.S. And it was really crazy. It was just like the movies. It's wild. But I did not believe it. I genuinely thought it was just part of like a, a, a law of like to mm-hmm. make American TV shows, movies, and it's actually like that. Like, like I remember every single day of the week, I would get a group text from somebody that was like an address and a time to be there every single day of the week. That's At least like- one, if not three or four. And hazing? Were you hazed? No, I wasn't a frat kid. Okay. That's just frats. I was just a normal college kid, business kid. And yeah, that's where I really was drinking, getting after it. <laughs> Blacking out and thinking it was funny. I was like, <laughs> getting a lot of experience. Yeah, I, I learned. I mean, I got it out of me. I still will occasionally. It sounds like a lit, really good yeah. experience to have, honestly. Like, I'm, I'm jealous. And being able to, like, have all of that temptation and then still do well in school, like, the willpower for that takes a lot. And I was, you know, doing 18 credits and becoming a rapper, and I had, like, a normal job. So, it was really like, wow. can I handle this? And I did. And that felt good. Oh, that's impressive. Thank you. I could not handle that. I already know. Just no part of that sounds appealing. <laughs> At all. Like being haze, like, being part of a sorority, I just... I, well, yeah, that part, yeah. Like I was I that. just completely... What is hazing? Um, when like you have like to... Like for us when they bully the younger people. Oh. Yeah, it's like, like past tests, so they make you do crazy things in order to join a group. Okay. That sounds all fun. That sounds I would awful. Send, I would send like, my why would I want to frat? join this? I've heard At crazy all. things about it. Uh, it's not that common anymore, but I had friends that that had to go through it at different colleges. Mm-hmm. But I had a friend in, who went to UGA, University of Georgia uh, in Athens, and it's a very similar big party school, uh, with smart kids. And his, I remember his hazing was, he had to get up in a tree in the front yard and he had to smoke a joint every hour for 10 hours and he couldn't talk to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> So he just he just had to get in a tree and get really high and like <laughs> they would come check on him and like bring him like snacks but like, <laughs> like I'm, a, that, I'm a cat snacks. now like, <laughs> I just thought that was, I'm a cat <laughs> I was like yeah that's funny I'm like that that's what I would yeah that's kind of anything I'd want like yo just be uncomfortable for ten hours and get really high yeah I have like a little experience um, I forget where it was but early early on in my twenties I got paid to with another girl to do like a live show. Um, at some sort of frat party. And I remember coming in and there was these like really long tables and there was maybe uh, like 30 of them all sitting around the table with their shirts off, like banging. <laughs> and they were all drinking and so like scary. going where, where all rowdy. It? And we, we like danced and performed on the table. I was in Texas. That's terrifying. It was, was it cool or was it weird? It was cool. Because I feel like the, <laughs> okay. they can be weird. So I, be cool. I did have security. I do remember there was one person who um, he like kept trying to touch me. And I was like, don't touch me. And he kept trying. And so I went over to the girl and I was like, this guy, the girl that I was with. And she looks over. She's like, you? She's like, get up here. And then she's like, this one's bad. And she like got her whip and started whipping the <laughs> fuck out of him <laughs> in front of everybody. He was actually screaming. She was hitting him as hard as she could. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you didn't like it? Uh, no, yeah, but no. everyone else thought it was funny, but they did get their guy off the table. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that. punishment fits the crime. Yeah. <laughs> it's justice in my yeah. eyes. <laughs> Wait, Mia, you did that. So you would get hired to go to parties and events like that? That was the only one like that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Because I was feature dancing at the time, which okay. is like I would I would be hired to go to like different uh, strip clubs and, and be the feature for the yeah, of night. Course. Yeah. So that was just that, like a, a private uh, like sort of gig that the company who booked me got for me. My mm-hmm. first job in LA when I was 19 was driving escorts and strippers around to their locations. Nice. And I had to, I, it was cool. Escorts. <laughs> but I had to, I went to UC Irvine and I took them to a party and it was a real like come to Jesus moment <laughs> when I saw like guys my age in school and I'm the driver of the girl. Yeah. But they were, yeah, they were all touchy and stuff, but I couldn't do anything about it. I didn't have a whip or anything. No. So. <laughs> or a feisty yeah. little blonde with yeah. a whip. So yeah. I, it was just kind of like, you know, 
all every man for himself. Yeah, well, right. they should have. They should like in that situation. We had security with us. Thankfully, she just I thought wanted to whip him. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good way to handle it. Yeah, want to plug the album? Yeah, I mean, what do you have upcoming? Music wise, I I kind of pivoted a little bit in the last six months. Um, I wanted to try doing a country EP, and it ended up being a lot better than I expected. And I became close with Shania Twain and Zach Brown and all these people, and really got into the country world. So I've been in Nashville a lot, and I'm I'm making a full album that's almost done. Is it all country, or is it like a like a mix? It's more of a mix. It's country with you know trap drums on it which which people don't realize it's a lot of the current country that's out there it's like Morgan Wallen they have those kind of drums on it so it's more friendly to everybody um but obviously I'm actually rapping more and it's it's very gravy I'm still same lyrical type of content but it's it's catchy country friendly it's good. That's really exciting and I, I I love Shania Twain I always have I was saying that I I used to have her CD in my little Walkman in high school. She's so sweet. She's so cool. I also using pics after this of our last photo shoot. She's she's a badass. So what made you into a country album? A country esque. Yeah, I was meeting a lot of people in that in that world and in my fan base in the South and the Midwest has been growing a lot. And uh I've done some country festivals and mm-hmm. and you know, I'm from Minnesota so I've known country music, but I haven't really been a huge fan until the last probably three or four years Mm -hmm. and i started listening to more and more and meeting these artists that i liked a lot and they're kind of like like let's say like morgan wallen or hardy or the those folks that they feel very much like the same they feel like like friends i could have grown up with but just came from a completely different you know place like a small town in tennessee versus you know a decent sized town in minnesota and i ended up becoming a rapper they became country artist but i feel like if we were in the same place they're all people that i'd be like best friends with mm-hmm. so very nice people in there in the country world and um once i started making some stuff and just sending it to them for fun they're like yo this is tight this yeah is good. i feel like everyone's gone into country the past couple of years i'm like yeah. it's been cool for a long time guys <laughs> yeah it's yeah. definitely becoming yeah it's popping off again which is Convenient. Okay. I like like two thousands rap, like nineties rap, and then country music, and that's it. No, no, that's it. I like other things too, but like that's the two genres that I've always loved. And everyone now is like jumping on the country train. Whereas five years ago, they were like, mm-hmm. "That's not stop playing it." No, but yeah. I remember like, there being like a common thing you'd hear where you say, "What genres do you like?" And like everything but country. <laughs> always. Like that's so whack. I, I, I mean, I don't know. I would never just single out something to hate on. But then I started listening to it more. I'm like, I really get now. Maybe it's like when you get to a certain age, you kind of like start to understand it more. I feel like a lot of country is like kind of sad and like sad sounding, at least with the notes and, and, you know, it's minor scale stuff and uh, people hear it and they like lose confidence. Whereas like we're at this age where like we already took L's. We already know. We already have been through it. So it's yeah. like, we get it. We like it, you know? Yeah, I think maybe some more, like people like Morgan Wallen are making it more mainstream and making it more digestible for for more, for people who don't listen to really like twangy country music, like didn't grow mm-hmm. up with it or is like, hasn't been exposed to that kind of music. And also country festivals and concerts are so fun. My yeah, favorite thing sick. by far. Yeah, crazy. Do you go line dancing? Are you one of them? I mean... <laughs> Do you it's put hot. on your little cowboy boots? That's hot. <laughs> I, mean, I try. Hey. I, like, I try. I'm not as coordinated, again, with the delusion. I'm not as coordinated as I am in my head. <laughs> yeah. So I think I look really good. And then someone will show me a video. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't look how I thought I looked. Um, but the last <clears> time <throat> I went, I was in Fort Worth, Texas at Billy Bob's. And that was really, <laughs> that was really fun. Sounds like a place you'd be <laughs> That's at. Like a great just, time. I mean, it's I I never go to bars or clubs in LA, but I would spend every weekend is at a there place a, like that. Is there a place like that here that you know of? Desert Five. Desert Five. Desert Five. Do they do line dancing there? So I've been there, but I, there was never dancing. Wednesday nights. Let's go, Gabby. I'm down. Desert Five. I'm not good. I'm neither am I. Okay. I don't know what I'm doing, but they always have like an instructor, don't they? Do they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm down. It's like a leader. Yeah. Okay. I have two left feet, but I like like 10 out of 10 for effort. 
<laughs> I'll try. Yeah, I'll try my own. I'm taking pre workout beforehand. Are, are there usually into... like the mechanical bowls there? I feel like there should be. I mean, yeah, there wasn't. There wasn't Texas. Are you? Do you get on it? I yeah, would, I would never. You, you do. That's. Tough. Are you I good? Mean, no, I'm not good at it, but I'll try it. Like, <laughs> I'm like not afraid to be embarrassed, yeah. but um, but yeah, I just I feel like I thrive there. But like country festivals, country concerts are just so much more fun. Um, like I went to CMA Fest last year in Nashville. Um, and they're just, the people there are so different as well than like any other festivals. Yeah, of course. Just so much nicer. It's a completely different vibe. Yeah, I thought they're more like Australians. They're much more friendly and. Also, I can imagine everyone's drinking where other yep. other concerts people would be doing like different types of I was going to say, yeah, it's way happy. more yeah. just drinking and not other drugs that yeah. could yeah. change your mood. Completely different vibe. So big fan, very excited for this country esque. Album. <laughs> I just want to hear what it, yeah, so what it would sound like. Just hearing your music and then everything. I, I'm like singing. I'm singing on it too. Like my voice. I don't usually sing. It doesn't make the, the sort of keys that we work in in uh, a lot of rap and, and just the beats in general don't really fit well with singing. But there is some singing on there. Like some kind of sounds like Johnny Cash a little bit. Did you okay, do, take like voice lessons for it? I did uh, very recently. Once we started, like, I mean, honestly, after we had pretty much finished the project, and I was like, <laughs> "Yo, this is like gonna do well." I need to learn it now. I need to learn how to sing. So I've been doing some lessons. Yeah, uh, I want to do voice lessons. So just so it's I fun. Can... It's chill. The lady that I work with is awesome. If you want to, I yes, link. please. It would really just be for me, so I can sing in the shower and enjoy it. Yeah. I thought it was going to be weird. It's so chill. It's I, I would recommend it. Are you a good singer? I can sing, but all I sing is like show t- show tunes. Show I, tunes like I love singing show tunes. Like Really? Old school. No, no. Well, what's a show? I when I, when I say that, I mean Broadway. Okay. Like uh so Cats or Wicked or I'll sing just anything okay. that's pretty. So kind of yeah, <laughs> I get that. And I have to try to belt for me, all I can sing is like Frank Sinatra. Really? Because I just know his music totally really well, and we have, voice we have the same range. Yeah. So like, I could sing that sort of well. But no, I, I remember once I started taking lessons, like, oh, I'm not good at this. Like, let me. I'm better now, but still, I was at first. I was like, oh, because when you sing with somebody on a song and you're in the car and like you hear the actual voice, you think you're hitting all the notes. Yes. And you hear the fucking <laughs> instrumental, and you're like, oh god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm a terrible singer. I have no comment. Nothing to add to this. Well, hopefully, this sets a low precedent for when I tour, and then you know, maybe I'll actually sing well by then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So come see it. That's exciting. Yep. Yeah. Let us know. Is there anything else you want to plug? I think I want to plug. Um. No. This is a dope podcast. Thank you. Go listen. More <laughs> of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're very excited. All right, baby, we're signing out. Out of Bed Podcast, episode three. Me and the bad bitches, we are done today. Thank you. We should have him do his sign in. But it actually was not. It's episode three, right? Yeah, but that's funnier. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's better. You did amazing.